Giant Dipper at the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk is a very historic, classic wooden roller coaster. This 99-year-old coaster opened over 36,000 days ago, and yet it is still running really well, and in this video, I'll review the entire attraction. First things first, this prior and church design wooden coaster opened all the way back in 1924 with a cost of just $50,000, which is crazy. In 2023, you have to spend at least $5 million in order to get a really good attraction, if not way more than that. So it's really crazy how this coaster only costs $50,000. Additionally, in the queue line for Giant Dipper, they have some more historical references, which I really appreciated. Along with it only costing 50 grand, this coaster was built in a ridiculous 47 days. That's incredible. The original fare to ride this coaster, which is a half mile long exactly by the way, was 15 cents per ride. For reference, if you want to ride this coaster once in 2023, it's going to cost you $8. And that's a good segue actually to the different ways you can pay to ride this roller coaster. You essentially have two options. Number one would be to pay per ride. As I mentioned, Giant Dipper is one of the more expensive coasters and one of the more expensive rides at this park costing $8. Or you can get a wristband. These vary from about $40 to about $70, not including tax, depending on the day and the season. If you're coming to the boardwalk just to ride Giant Dipper, especially if you're local, then I think paying per ride makes sense, but maybe a season pass in that scenario makes even more sense. However, if you're coming out of town and want to do multiple rides, and want to do multiple rides more than once, it makes sense to do the all day wristband. The nice thing about a boardwalk park like Santa Cruz is that you get options for pay depending on what your interests are. I really do recommend though, if you're going to the boardwalk, that you should ride this coaster on every visit because it's historic and it's also a great attraction. One other note about the history of this coaster and that is on February 27th, 1987, this coaster was recognized as a US National Historic Landmark, which is really neat stuff. Giant Dipper is one of the more popular attractions at the boardwalk, but I actually think there's a couple rides in particular that have longer queue times typically than this coaster. Number one would be Undertow, the Mauer Spinning Coaster. The reason for this is directly related to capacity. Undertow can only have four people on a train at a time, whereas Giant Dipper has six cars per train with 24 total seats on each train. Another attraction that has a long queue time is Haunted Castle. This is a really great dark ride in my opinion, so I completely understand the queue times, but again, small cars, typically only four people per car. For more information relating to the park as a whole, you can refer to my Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk review, which I'll put in the end screen and in the link below. All right, with all of that nonsense out of the way, let's talk about what it's like to get a ride on the Giant Dipper. The number one thing I wanna warn you is that the inside queue doesn't have very much space to it, which means if you see the line totally wrapping around outside, don't be too worried. Even if it's all the way full, it's probably only a 25 to 30 minute wait at most. The station itself has a very classic feel to it. Things like no air gates. It's weird, but it's awesome. Additionally, and this may be a surprise to some, but you take your stuff with you on this attraction. This element no doubt speeds up operations, which are actually quite good. Part of it is because of how simple the restraint check is. All you have is a lap bar. This is great because it's a somewhat wild coaster at times, so having just a lap bar really allows you to appreciate all of it. Your 2,640 foot long experience begins with an in the dark tunnel. There really isn't anything too surprising in here, no big drops, no crazy airtime moments, no drop track, but it's a nice little way to start the ride. After you emerge from the tunnel, you ascend the 70 foot tall lift hill. The height isn't too wild, but you still get a great view, especially of the ocean to your right side, which is just beautiful. 65 foot first drop is a pretty decent one. You build up some good speed, and I imagine this is where you hit your 55 mile an hour top speed. That being said, you probably won't get any airtime here, and if you do, it's not going to be a terrible amount, at least from my experience. Unfortunately, there is a little bit of a pothole at the bottom of the drop, but it isn't too painful at least. You then rise up into a large left hand turn, traversing you back the way you just came. You have a little bit of speed going through this one, and from a force standpoint, all you're probably going to get is a pinch of laterals. You then traverse a large camelback, not really getting a terrible amount of airtime. If anything, you might get a little bit in the back as you go down the hill. Next up is another smaller hill that wasn't too memorable for me before it leads into a left hand turn that can give you some nice little laterals. A common theme of some of these older wooden roller coasters is that a lot of the turns don't have tons of banking, which is why coasters like Giant Dipper and Cyclone at Coney Island have some good laterals on them. At the bottom of this turn, there is again a little pothole 
and the transition back to your right side isn't the smoothest. This isn't the end of the world, and because of its age, I'm giving it a lot of grace, but it's just something I want to note. From that moment, I actually think the ride becomes a little bit crazier. You have this airtime hill that can provide some nice floater airtime. Next up, you have back-to-back -back airtime hills to follow that one, and I think both of these provide decent floater airtime, not the most crazy floater air you're going to get on the roller coaster, but again, this coaster is 99 years old. Following that, you have another left-hand turn. From what I remember, this one has a little bit more laterals than the previous ones. You then have your third minor pothole before popping into your finale, back to back to back airtime hills with the one in the middle being the best of the three. You then slide into the brakes and at this point you still have some good speed going into it. I think the finale of this coaster, while not being one of the most legendary or anything like that, I think is pretty satisfying. I don't really know if there's a standout moment on this coaster per se, it's just solid from start to finish and I really enjoyed it. Elements can only go so far though. Let's talk about smoothness. Is Giant Dipper rough? That's an interesting question. It's certainly not smooth start to finish, and I did mention some of the minor potholes, but I wouldn't necessarily label it as rough. It does have a little bit of shimmy throughout, but that's to be expected for a coaster of this age. I think the bigger problem from that perspective is some of the transitions, which are not very smooth and very fluid. But again, I'm going to give it a lot of grace because of how old it is. And to be completely honest, I think the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk deserves a lot of credit for how well they've kept this coaster running. It would be very easy to let this coaster get rough and have it not be enjoyable, but obviously they really care for this thing, and rightly so. It's a National Historic Landmark after all. And to be honest, I think Gold Striker at California's Great America, at least as of my last ride in 2021, was rougher. Now I understand that they've done some retracking on that coaster, but still, it just goes to show how well they've done. And it's really great to see a park take care of an old attraction, and they really treasured our history here at Santa Cruz, which is awesome to see in my opinion. So, giving this coaster a final score. This is kind of a tough one, but overall, it's a very fun attraction. And in the end, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. The coaster looks great. It's historic. It has a great setting. The only thing I would nitpick is some of the rough patches, but again, I can kind of look beyond some of that. At the end of the day, I do think Giant Dipper is the best ride at the boardwalk, though I also really enjoyed my rides on Haunted Castle. Those are the top two by far in my opinion. So there you have it, Giant Dipper at the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, one of the most historic roller coasters out there and a really enjoyable attraction to ride as well.